This is Make Use Of, my name is Matt, and in this video we're taking a look at the NES 500 power station and the FSP 100 solar panel, both from Nightcore. Let's go. So we have a sort of two-in-one for you folks today. This is the NES 500 Power Station by Nightcore. And I know what you're thinking. It does sound sort of like the newest video game console. If I had to guess, though, I'd say NES, in this case, stands for Nightcore Energy Station or something like that. If you know what NES stands for, uh, leave me a comment below and let me know. So alongside that, we have this little guy. This is the FSP 100. And I know what FSP stands for here. Foldable solar panel. Now Nightcore reached out to us over at Make Use Of just to see if we wanted to take these two little babies for a spin and see how they performed. All right, first on the docket, let's address the NES 500. What is it and who is it for? In the simplest terms, the NES 500 is a portable outdoor power station designed for things like road trips, emergency backup power, mobile offices, powering on-the-go electronic devices, and just getting off the grid. If those things appeal to you, then you're who Nightcore built this unit for. Now, I know if you're like me, you probably spend a lot of time in front of a screen. So sometimes it's nice to just pack up your stuff and head out to the campsite. Well, the NES 500 lets you bring power for your small devices with you. That way you can charge your phone or your laptop, your iPad, things of that nature. The NES 500 is different from other power stations though, as it's actually an award-winning unit. It's received an IF Design Award this year, a Good Design Award, an ISPO Award this year, and an Outstanding Outdoor Gold Award from Outdoor by ISPO. Needless to say, a lot of people like this unit, myself included. The reason Nightcore calls it the NES 500 is because of its 500 watt AC output. That means you can use devices needing up to 500 watts of power. It's also got a 1000 watt surge capacity, so you can even accommodate higher powered items to some degree. The capacity here is 518 watt hours or uh, 144,000 milliamp hours, whichever designation you prefer. Weight here is 12.46 pounds or 5.65 kilograms, and the unit measures 9.33 inches tall, 10.31 inches across the face, and 6.06 .06 inches on the sides. That's 237 by 262 by 154 millimeters if you're using the metric system. This bad boy also has plenty of ports. You've got a USB C PD power port at 60 watts, a 220 volt or 110 volt full sine wave AC output port. Uh, the voltage is going to depend on the regional variation you get. Uh, three USB-A ports and a 12-volt car charger output port. On the input side of things, you have a single DC-18 barrel connector that can be hooked up to the included charger, or you can use, you guessed it, a solar panel like the FSP-100. Solar is the best way to charge this power station, in my opinion, and even Nightcore's website states that doing so will cut your charge time from 10.5 hours down to 5.5 hours. That's a big jump in time savings and sunlight is free. Inside the NES 500, you've got a cooling optimized modular battery pack that has a battery management system and all the batteries inside are UL certified to be of high quality. The external casing of this device is hard ABS plastic, uh, but there's also rubber in the places where it counts most, places like the handle and the feet. And that'll help you avoid sore hands and also marring up your surfaces. Finally, the display on this unit is a monochrome LCD that shows input and output wattage, charge time, and battery percentage remaining. Suggested retail price on this unit is around $499, which is pretty consistent with other power stations across the board. Usually you can expect to pay about a dollar per watt for a lot of these devices. Sometimes more, sometimes less, but quality units will be somewhere around a dollar per watt or more. Now just a little bit about the FSP100 because it's not your standard solar panel. It's actually Nightcore's first solar panel and it's super foldable and packable like I said. It offers 100 watts fast charging, uh, multiple output ports, it weighs an ultralight 4.6 pounds 
and it is made from high density waterproof fabrics. So don't expect to submerge it. It's just good for like rainstorms and light sun showers. It also includes eight hook and loop fasteners so you can attach it to things like trees or a vehicle or your tent or your mother-in-law, whatever you'd like to attach it to, you can attach it to. As for ports, it has the standard DC-18 barrel connector plus a 45 watt PD USB-C and two 15 watt USB-A ports uh, for plugging in your devices directly. Now you can use all three of these ports at the same time. It's also got smart voltage stabilizing technology which regulates the output voltage so you get safe charging. The FSP100 will cost you $349 on Nightcore's website, which brings the total for both devices to around $849, give or take a few bucks for Uncle Sam's cut. And let me tell you, for $849, you're getting a lot of capability in a very portable package. This combo will easily fit in your trunk or in the backseat of your car. Um, heck, I've even strapped it to one of my e-bikes. So what is in the box? Now inside the box for the NES 500, you're gonna get the NES 500 portable outdoor power station, you'll get an AC charger, you'll get a 12 volt DC car charger, and you're gonna get the owner's manual. For the FSP 100, you'll get the FSP 100 foldable solar panel, you'll get eight of those hook and loop fasteners we were talking about, and you're gonna get the owner's manual. So I wanna talk a little bit about the build quality of these two units, and we'll start with the NES 500 power station. One of the greatest things about this little power station is its ABS fireproof shell. Not only do you get the fireproof aspects, but you also get a shell that's tough and rugged, and it's gonna keep the battery pack from corroding or breaking down due to temperature. Obviously, you don't wanna leave this in a hot car, but it will handle somewhat higher temperatures. On the front of the unit, you've got four yellow buttons, one of which is the power button, while the other three operate the power outputs. You press the button, and an LED comes on to indicate the device is now supplying power. You've also got not one, but two cooling fans, one on each side to help dissipate heat. Then you've got the easy carry handle that has been constructed from carbon steel and wrapped in this velvety soft rubber so you don't hurt your hands when you're lugging it around. Finally, there's the backlit real-time LCD, which can easily be seen in both day and nighttime environments. Now, from a design standpoint, the NES 500 is really cool looking. Uh, from a build quality standpoint, the device also seems sturdy with no rattles or jingles to speak of when you pick it up and shake it. As for the FSP100, the main material here is gonna be TPU, which gives the panel a fairly durable construction. Now, while TPU is not as flexible as some other materials, it does fine for this application. Unfolded, the panel is also about the same size as many automotive windshields, which makes it easy to place when you're car camping. It's 22.8 inches on the short side and 56.3 inches on the long side. When folded, the panel measures a scant 11.9 by 13.4 inches and has a carrying handle built in for easy transport. Unlike most big bulky panels, the FSP100 is, in my opinion, the perfect size for just tossing in your camping backpack or carrying with you on the road or in the trunk of your car. It also feels as though it will stand up to years of use without any kind of major issues. So to test this unit, I brought out my old faithful 1800 watt hairdryer, which usually gives my power stations a decent workout. I also attached the unit to one of my e-bikes to see how it would hold up to something that needed a little bit less power. Finally, I plugged in my old faithful 1000 watt tea kettle to see how that might stress the unit. The hairdryer didn't last more than a few seconds, which was kind of expected due to the high wattage. Um, but it did surge a bit rather than immediately shut off. The tea kettle was a similar story. However, the output wattage did ramp up to the 800 watt range before lowering down slightly. At that point, both internal fans kicked on immediately and the unit got decently hot under the handle. The charge level at that time, which started out at about 34%, also dropped down to 22% in uh, only a matter of a few minutes. Now for plugging into my e-bike, the draw was around about 136 watts. I think this was the most successful use of the NAS 500. And I think that the electronics around this wattage are probably what Nightcore had in mind when they designed this power station. So with two iPads, an iPhone XS, an Apple MacBook Air 2015, a Viltrox LED uh, light, and an Apple Magic trackpad all charging, the unit was only pushing about 90 watts total output. That was with every port occupied. Now that means for powering smaller electronics on the go, 
you really can't go wrong with the NES 500's combination of portability and power output. So what about testing the FSP100 solar panel? Now, despite not getting the maximum wattage from the FSP100, I was able to achieve between 60 and 70 watts, depending on how overcast the day was. It's pretty well known that monocrystalline panels won't usually give you 100% of the claimed power output. That means you're not gonna be able to get 100 watts out of the FSP100, even if you're using it in direct sunlight. But 60 to 70 watts is still quite a bit of power for a unit this compact. At the lowest level, wattage barely crept past 10, but that was during the late afternoon and the panel was slightly obstructed. Overall, I'm happy with the performance of this panel, and I think the light weight and the high efficiency makes it a no-brainer when considering whether to buy the NES by itself or with the FSP100. Now let's talk warranty and repairability. There are a few segments to this warranty, including a 15-day exchange through an authorized Nightcore dealer, a 12-month free repair period, and a six-month warranty extension. There's also a limited warranty covering labor and maintenance. As for repair, like most power stations we've reviewed, you don't want to try and repair this power station yourself unless you know what you're doing. And even then, I'd recommend you ship it back to Nightcore. Neither the unit nor the solar panel are designed to be taken apart, and doing so can void the warranty. So why would we recommend this power station and this solar panel? So to me, the NES 500 is the perfect balance of portable power and weight. And while there are bulkier units out there for like car and camper van use, 500 watts and 500 watt hours is an excellent size for weekend camping trips, small electronics, road trips, and even light emergency use. And at only 12 pounds, the NES 500 is light enough to toss into a day pack. But it also provides enough juice to charge your phones, computers, tablets, and other small items. If you couple that portability with the lightweight FSP100 solar panel, you really have a winning combo to fit the needs of a small group. Now, while this pair is not gonna power higher wattage items, it will come in handy for keeping the essentials charged. Finally, there's Nightcore's reputation. Now, this brand is well known and their products are consistently produced with high quality in mind. That alone should steer you towards the NES 500 as opposed to another option in the same class. So why might you want to consider other options? Now, the only downside that I've found in my experience with the NES 500 is the output limitations. Like many power stations this size, the NES 500 has also got a limited number of ports. So large families are probably gonna wanna look at something that's a little bit bigger. And additionally, those high wattage devices are not gonna jive with this unit. So don't expect to power things like a Dometic fridge, a microwave, an AC unit, or like a chest freezer. It just doesn't have the surge capacity or the wattage to be able to do so. There's also no onboard MPPT controller according to the specs and no Anderson power pole inputs or outputs. As for the FSP100 solar panel, there really isn't much to condemn, save for the DC-18 cable being a touch short. But Nightcore sent an extended cable with the demo unit, so it seems like the company has acknowledged this limitation. Now, should you buy the NES500 and the FSP100? I think size, output wattage, surge capacity, uh, weight, and durability all make this power station a winner from my perspective. Compared to other power stations in the same category, the Nightcore unit brings both a stellar reputation and outstanding performance to the table. The NES 500 unit is able to power small electronics with ease, and when combined with the FSP100, becomes an exceptional way to perpetually charge your favorite handheld devices. It's a remarkable unit, and one that will serve you well on almost all your adventures. So what do you think of the Nightcore NES 500? Leave me a comment below and let me know. And if you want to check out our full written review with all of the technical specifications, head on over to MakeUseOf.com. Now for Make Use Of, my name is Matt. Thanks for sticking with me today. Sorry about the wind, and we will see you in the next video.